business owner, because all of you on here are business owners, correct? You're a small business owner. You most likely have your own suite or any other type of thing going on. And some of you have multiple businesses. And I think um, when I was starting my journey as a small business owner, there was a lot of imposter syndrome. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of how do I do this? Or I'm not good enough to, you know, let's take, let's take Christy guy as an example, you know, like how do I couldn't work on celebrity clients. How could I do that? I'm not good enough for that. And those types of thoughts. And typically our thoughts are the foundation of our potential in life. And if we don't change our thoughts and our beliefs and what we believe we are capable of as human beings, then it's really hard to then change our behaviors and then change our business. So one of the first things I learned as a small business owner years ago was to start by developing my mindset to help then develop my business. And a piece of that was money mindset. And um, I'm going to share kind of a lot of my personal story with you today as we go over these different topics. Um, and so they'll kind of, I will be sharing a few tips and it's, I'm going to keep it very base level tips today, but that is because um, it could get very overwhelming if I try and do all this in like one setting. So we're going to do kind of just scratch the surface. And then I would love your feedback if you want to do more of it. And I am so happy to dive in deeper because this is probably one of my favorite topics of all time. And I'll talk about why in just a minute, but how to start developing a money mindset. And just like the text said today, you know, how to earn more income right? A lot of the times we can kind of be a roadblock to that. And we don't even know that. And I'll talk about how that surfaced in my life. I'm going to push play on this. Um, so I hope this helps you today. I'd love your feedback. If you want to continue different mindset trainings like this, I also have a few, um, friends who are, are actually money mindset specialists. I'm sure that they'd be happy to come in as well and add on top of this. But today, what we're going to look at is assessing your current money mindset. What do you believe about money? And then challenging or rewriting limiting beliefs by a show of hands. And you can either like use the little hand thing in your chat, or you can like raise your hand on the video. Um, how many of you have dove into like personal development or self-help books, anything like that to help you become a better person? Is that new to you? Or raise your hand if you have done something like this before in regards to personal development. Awesome. I see a few. Love that. All right, cool. So for some of you, there's a few on here who have, if you have not, here's what I'm going to say about this. Um, I know when I first entered into this world of being a business owner and my business mentor started mentoring me through things like this, I was like, Whoa, this seems a little wooey. <laughs> This seems a little bit wooey to me. I don't know if I like, does this actually work? But at that time, it was a decade ago and I was a quarter million dollars in debt, um, buried in student loan debt. And I was freaking out about the future and how I was ever going to afford to have kids because every single week we'd have spending freezes because we didn't have enough money in the bank to pay our bills. We drove from North Carolina to Kansas City to see our family at the holidays because we couldn't afford two plane tickets. Um, we were robbing Peter to pay Paul and it was stressing me out. And so a decade ago, that's where I was at financially. And it was very scary. I had no idea how I was going to get out of debt on um, my husband and I's salary. So I decided to start looking for part-time jobs and things like that. And that's how I stumbled into being a small business owner because I saw that I could build my own online business. Um, and in that, it challenged some of my money mindset beliefs. And so there was a point in my business when my business started to do well. And I remember starting to shrink back because of exactly what we're going to talk about today. And I do truly believe that I would have sabotaged my business because of my money mindset had I not done some of these practices that we're gonna be speaking about today. So although this might sound wooey, I am gonna ask you to go with me there and ask yourself, what do you have to lose? This doesn't cost any money. I'm not asking you to spend anything. I'm not asking you to put hours of your time into this. I'm just asking you to maybe challenge your brain a little bit today and see what happens over the next week, okay? 
and I'll have more resources for you as well. If this is something that you're really interested in and you want to dive deeper into. I did not make any of the stuff up. It's all from the experts that I've learned over the years. So, okay. All right. So first let's just talk about it. What is money, right? Money is simply an exchange, an exchange that facilitates trade. That is it, right? Is we trade one thing. Oops. Hold on. Sorry. I was trying to move my screen so I could look over here. We trade one thing that people have assigned value to for something else that people have assigned value to. However, what typically happens in that, hold on just a second. Let me get back here. Although money is just facilitating trade, there's typically an emotional or sometimes even a physical response when people speak about money, okay? I'm gonna ask you guys lots of questions today. I love love it when y'all chat in, share your feelings, share your ideas. I think it helps solidify um, that we kind of all have these things that we carry with us. So if I were to say to you, hey, I'm gonna go to the mall and I'm gonna go drop $25,000 shopping today. What emotion does that respond for you? Does that, does that, maybe it doesn't for some of you, but does that create a physical or emotional response from you internally? You don't have to share it. You can, if you want. Um, if it does, you can raise your hand. You don't have to share what the emotion is. But typically people have an emotional response when we start talking about money. Um, I know one of my friends, whenever I say something to the effect of like, I like your shoes, she always has to say, oh, I got them on sale at X, Y, and Z. Oh, I got a really good deal for them on X, Y, and Z. And we'll kind of talk about why that surfaces and why we, we defend our purchases um, sometimes. And it usually has to do with how we are brought up. So if I were to say, I'm going to spend $25,000 today at the mall and you have an emotional response, I'm going to challenge you in that. That emotional re response might be like, cool, that's awesome. Or that emotional response would be like, ooh, you could do so much more with $25,000 and just go shopping at the mall. You could help people, or you can go, you know, pay that forward. But here's what I challenge you. If money is simply an exchange that facilitates trade, right? Why do we have an emotional response when I mention that versus if I were to say, I'm gonna go drive 25,000 miles today. Your emotional response might be a little bit different, right? There's probably not excitement. There's probably not jealousy or envy. It's just like, oh, you're going to go drive. Man, that's a long trip. Okay, have fun, right? But it might not have such a triggering emotion, even though if we just think about the very basis, both are just an exchange. One is exchanging goods. The other is exchanging miles. But how we view money is so much more complicated because we typically have a relationship that we've built with money within the past. So that's where we're gonna to start today. I will make this bigger. Give me one second. Is assessing your current money and your current um, thoughts and feelings around money. So I'm gonna ask you to do this. I'm gonna give you some time. Let me make this bigger. And on your piece of paper or something in front of you, what you're gonna do is just read each statement. Um, and if you are a sales or business owner, this, the blue are for you as well. So I think that's everyone on this call. Um, and what you're going to do is put zero for never one for sometimes two for frequently and three most always in regards to this money relationship assessment. All right. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that and go.
Okay, take one more minute. If you, I know some of you, you might be multitasking right now, so I can send this out. We can send it out in the email as well. It looks like. I love seeing um, Patricia and Ebony's response to my mall shopping comment. Oh, okay. Now I'm seeing even more. I didn't even see those. Kathleen anxious, <laughs> Natalie big eyes, <laughs> Ashley definitely <laughs> love it. Oh, do you save that money? Oh no, I wish it could. These are great. All right. Thank you guys so much. All right. We are going to move on. Before we move on to the next slide, I see a few more people still um, jotting things down. Here's what I'll say. I just, I just took this with you guys. And I want you to know that like a decade ago, I was like basically in a three column, like for three was everything, like literally every single one, especially the last one, hoping I could win the lottery, get inheritance or find a man to take care of me. Like I was like banking on that happening. Um, <laughs> even though I was already married. So I don't know how that was going to work out. <laughs> but like That was like, that that's how much control over my life I thought I had. I, I basically thought I was powerless. And if you walk away with anything from today's call, I hope you understand that you have the power to change your life. There are ways for you to do this. And hopefully either whether that that's through being a posh pro and being able to earn money there or being a body partner. Some of you are on that, on that side of things as well. I hope you understand that you do not have to have a bad relationship with the money the rest of your life. Um, and that we can change these thoughts. Okay. Here we go. Let me figure out how to get out of here. We'll go to the score. Maybe. Sorry, my computer is just being a little bit slow. Come on. All right. I'm gonna, here's the assessment sco score. So you can see zero to 10, you have a very healthy relationship. 11 to 20, you're not doing too bad with your money relationship. There are occasional spats, but they usually don't last long and they're, and you're adept to working them out. Or 21 to 30, your money is not your honey. Your relationship with money is in the dumps or it's like a roller coaster with highs and lows, feels unpredictable to you or your constant fo focus or sense of worry and fear around money has likely been a pattern for you for some time. Um, and it's time to establish a new healthy relationship. So if you wanna share what category you fall into, you can, you do not have to. Um, but I will tell you a decade ago, I was probably like a 30 out of 30, like literally. Um, and to this day, so like my score today was seven. Um, however, I still have to really work on my relationship with money because what we're oh, about to talk about, you'll see our, how we learn this relationship with oh. money is so deep rooted in our subconscious. We sometimes don't even know it exists. We don't understand how we think or feel about money and then how it's impacting every other area of our life. So, um, um, one second. Okay. Uh, so with that, you can share them if you want to, you don't have to, um, we're going to talk about how did we get here? How do we get to this, <laughs> this, um, place with money and how do we change it? Because so there's a book, it's called get rich, lucky bitch. I, this is, um, based kind of on her concepts. I recommend everyone to read it. But when we think about our relationship with money and how we get here, it's a culmination of a, a lot of things. It can be your upbringing, right? How did your parents speak about money? How did they talk about money? Um, it could be what we see in our society, on our culture, in our culture. Uh, for example, if we think about the movies that we expose ourselves to, um, and let's take, for example, The Devil Wears Prada. 
Devil Wears Prada has actually has everyone on here seen Devil Wears Prada? Has anyone not seen it? Well, Devil Wears Prada focuses on um, this, you know, meek, shy, kind of like homely girl who goes and works for Prada or this magazine, this big Vogue magazine, I believe. And there is a woman that's at the head of, I'm going to say Vogue, so I, but she's the head of Vogue. And this woman has it all. She is rich, but she is also a B-I-T-C-H. She is not a nice human being. She's mean. She is bossy. This young girl comes in, works for her, the meek one. And she doesn't have a lot of money. She doesn't have a lot of things, but she's so sweet and she's so kind and she's so nice. As we go through the movie, we see the girl who comes in as that assistant. She um, becomes more established, becomes earns more money and we see her personality shift where now that she has more money or she has like nice things now because she's given those things she's now also mean and I bring that up because in a lot of movies it's depicted that women when they have money they're depicted as mean they're depicted as pushy they're depicted as evil Cruella de Vil, if you think about Cruella de Vil and who she is in that movie um, Bridesmaids that funny humorous movie it's the one that's wealthy. She's like the mean one, right? Mean girls. The, I mean, that whole movie is exactly just that. Um, parent trap. The list goes on and on. Um, I remember when I heard this for the first time and I was reading this book and I was like, oh my gosh, like that's so true. And I just never realized it before. And as a female, although we don't realize we're consuming this idea, we're consuming this, um, this message that females with money are bad, females with money are mean, females with money are X, Y, and Z, it kind of sinks into us and we don't even realize it. And we be begin to maybe have thoughts like that because we've seen so many maybe movies or shows where this idea is forced down our throat. And after I um, heard this for the first time, I was like so fired up and mad about it. And it was Christmas time and I turned on um, Hallmark. And I cannot remember the name of the movie, but it was like a new Christmas Hallmark movie. And lo and behold, it was about this attorney. She was a female attorney and she was a do-gooder and she just wanted to save the world, but her business was failing. And then it was versus another female attorney who was well-off and wealthy and she was running the world, but she was also just an able. Um, and I was like, there it is again. Like, why can't it be flipped? And I will tell you that Growing up, I grew up in a home of, um, I have five brothers and sisters. There's six of us, from my parents, neither of my parents went to college. And we grew up in a 900 square foot home with eight people living in it, three bedrooms, one bath, very tiny. And um, we didn't have a lot growing up. My parents are like the most amazing people. We didn't have a lot growing up. And so a lot of the times I heard from my parents, I saw two different things. One, it was like, if my parents maybe felt less than because someone had more than them and they felt guilty that they couldn't give it to us kids, it was an easy way for them to be like, oh, well, that's like greedy. They don't need that nice of a car. Let's like our neighbors had like um, a Mercedes and they're like, they, that's so greedy. They don't need that car. They could be helping so many other people, but they have a nice car. And I think it was just my parents way of like protecting themselves because maybe they didn't feel um, they felt like they were maybe lacking in that area. But as a young child, I took that in like, People who drive nice cars are greedy. I literally had to ask my dad for permission to get a nice car when I had money to. Like that, I was 35 years old and I had to have a come to Jesus meeting with him because I felt guilty about making money. These things stick in us. Um, something else, my mom, bless her heart. <laughs> my mom would always take a shopping and write hot checks, always. Um, and so she was always like, well, you know, or if she got like a bonus at work or something, she would just spend it right away. So from a very young age, I just learned, oh, you just spend all your money as soon as you get it. Cause like, you're never going to have it again. Like all your money is gone. So just spend it all that way. Cause you're never going to have it. And like, you can never get caught up on your bills anyways. Like we're going to, I remember always hearing like, we can't get unburied anyways. Like the money is, we're always going to be in debt. Like we're never going to get out of debt. And so like, that was like my thought process is once you get in debt, you can't ever get out of debt. And so 10 years ago, when I was a quarter million dollars in debt, I felt very, very powerless. Hence why I wanted to win the lottery because <laughs> I thought it was my only way. But the cool thing is we're living in 2023 and there are so many ways to make money, including where you are at right now. Um, so next piece of this. 
Come on. Nope. So I just kind of talked about this, some of our limiting beliefs that we learn when we're little. We're going to identify those. Where did it go? All right, we're gonna identify those. So here are the prompts for you I want you to write down. Um, money is, you fill in the blank. Money is what? It can be anything. There's no right or wrong. It's literally what's first thing that pops in your head. Money does. People with money are. And then you can write down any experiences that you've had with money that are that you're holding on to or that impact your life today. It can be good or bad. All right, take one more minute. You can come back to this later if you want to continue working through it. You can absolutely share them if you want to chat them in. We'll have some open discussion at the end. We're like wrapping this up in like six minutes. Um, and then we'll have a little bit more discussion as well. All right. So you might be asking like, why are we doing this? Like, what does this matter? Um, you know, if I had all the money in the world, I wouldn't have any issues anyway. That's a very, has anyone ever thought that before? Because I always thought that like, oh, if I had more money, I wouldn't have any issues. How many of you have ever received a chunk of money? And then maybe you didn't make the wisest decision with it. You went and bought a TV at Walmart. When we had the 2020, um, they gave the tax or they gave people money, the 
rebates with COVID and you saw lines of people um, at Walmart getting new TVs, things like that. Um, until we really address our limiting beliefs with money, we will cap out that glass ceiling. We're going to cap out somewhere and you have to continue to grow and learn and push past these limiting beliefs, or you're going to end up right back where you started. Um, we also, also think, you know, like if I had all the money, I wouldn't have any problems, but that's not true. How many celebrities have you heard of who were rich, famous, had millions and millions of dollars, you guys, and they lost it all. It is literally just more money, more problems, big money, bigger problems. You're just spending more, right? Um, Burt Reynolds, he filed bankruptcy in 1996. Burt Reynolds, right? Michael Jackson, he was another one that you heard of lost all of his fortune. Um, Kevin Bacon, Nicolas Cage, MC Hanyer, MC Hammer, the list goes on and on. We hear about new people every day. Uh, Kim Zolziak from the Bravos franchise. It's another one we just heard about who lost all their money. They're like filing bankruptcy, all of the things. If we don't change these limiting beliefs, our money issues, even if you did win the lottery, it would just be gone. I, the lottery is another one, that crazy statistic, like is it 80% of people who win the lottery, like spend it all within like a very short period of time, just bananas. Um, and so identifying these, number one, helps you know how to use money when you begin to earn more of it, hopefully through posh um, or through your body partnership. But it also um, helps you begin to value yourself more. And as a small business owner, be able to charge what you desire and feel okay asking about that without projecting your own fear of money on other people. If you've ever thought like, oh, I don't want to sell something because I'm being pushy. That's a very, very common thing, right? You're thinking from your own pocketbook. So we have to realign that before we move on. So here's where we're going to end today. You just wrote down um, your prompts about money. And over the past decade, the one area I always have to work on with a therapist or life coach are my money beliefs always. Cause they like to just come back. Um, and I was doing this in 2020 and my coach said to me, then he's like, Ruth, think of money. Like your husband, think of it. Like, however you speak about money, that is how money is going to act back to you. It's an energy source. This is where it gets a little bit wooey, but he's like, you're telling me you want more money, but how do you feel about money? And I'm like, well, I'm scared of it. And he's like, okay, well, then why would money want to come around you if you are scared of money? I was like, well, I don't know. Like, it's like, if, if you act as scared of your husband, would your husband want to be around you? Or would he feel like really awkward and kind of like leave? Like he'd feel awkward and leave. Cause I was like tippy toeing around him. Um, and he's like, you know, are you grateful for your money? And I was like, well, I, I think I am, but I kind of like ignore it. Sometimes I just like act like it's not there. I'll just ignore it. Cause it makes me uncomfortable um, earning money. I still have to like fight through that. And he's like, okay, if you were in a, a relationship with money and it's like with your husband, if you ignored your husband, what would happen? He wouldn't come around anymore. He would leave whatever energetic force you're putting out there. You're going to start to see money, give you that same energy back or react to your feelings of it. So changing these, these, um, beliefs is key to starting to rewire our brains some of you guys might have past experiences that you wrote down, kind of like I talked about earlier with things that my parents told me. Um, the car one literally sticks out to this day. I'll never forget it. And we're adults now and we have to ask ourselves, is that true? Or was that something that I accidentally picked up as a kid and I can leave that belief behind? Is it true that people who drive nice cars are greedy? No, people like People who have more typically give more because they can, right? When I was broke as a joke, I wouldn't even give Christmas presents because I didn't have any money. Now that's not the case. I can help so many more people. Um, so we have to begin changing those thoughts and saying like, just because this was told to me when I was seven years old, doesn't make it true. Why am I still living by a belief that maybe just made someone else feel better in that moment, right? They didn't mean to give me that belief. It was purely by accident. Oh, 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 hold on. So what we're going to do is I want you to think about the relationship you want to have with money. And this is our last thing we're going to end with here. And um, we're going to rewrite 
these in positive statements. So think about the relationship that you do want to have with money um, and how you want to feel about it. So just some examples you can see on the screen. I am worthy of financial abundance. Some of you might have very deep rooted uh, fears that you don't deserve money for some reason. Maybe something was told to you as a child about your worthiness or something like that. It's tied to money and that's like your belief now. Um, some of you, money flows easily and abundantly into my life. One of my girlfriends, she came from a very successful family and she herself grew into a successful human being as an adult. However, as she grew up, she was terrified to earn money because she felt neglected by her parents because her mom was always saying, I have to go work if you want to have food on the table. Um, I have to go work to be able to pay for all your things. So she felt like, oh, if you want money, it comes at the sacrifice of having a family. So it can work in the opposite direction as well. And so she had to work through her money issues in a different way because she thought money equals ignoring your family. Money equals sacrificing time with your loved ones. Money equals your daughter resenting you into their thirties, right? So hers was flipped. Um, so look at your statements you have and I want you to flip them. So for example, my one of my statements was like, if I earn money, I'll be a greedy and bad person. In my heart and soul, I know that's not the truth, period, ever. Like that's not who I am. However, this was something that was like so ingrained in me. And so I still have it to this day. You can see, I can't see myself on the screen right now. Um, but I have these little note cards and they're all over my mirror. My limiting beliefs, it's not just about money, but this one says, I'm a generous and giving person who serves others through my success and abundance. And this is something I've told myself since 2015. And I would have ran my first business into the ground if I didn't adopt this. Um, so I want you to look at your statements and think about how you could reword them. This might take some time. Another one I have here is my success and abundance shows other women what is possible for them in their life too. I think as women, sometimes it's really hard, even if it's not even about money, but just like women don't brag on themselves. We don't say what we're good at, right? Men, pff, are you kidding? They're going to like tell us how good they are at making lasagna that they've made one time in their life. But like now they're like Chef Gordon Ramsay. Women are not that way, right? We're going to apologize or the entire time you're eating the lasagna and be like freaking out. Um, we, we have this belief that if we are proud of ourselves or say that we're good at something, right? That we're arrogant or going to be viewed that way. That's not the case. Um, think of how many people inspire you because of something that they've done for you. So I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you to look at your things and this is your homework to take those statements and rewrite them in a positive manner. Um, and we'll open it up now for any questions, thoughts, feedback that you have about this.